As you folks know, for decades, traditional pensions or defined benefit plans have been the retirement savings of choice for employers and employees in the public sector. They were basically a great way of providing a secure retirement for most workers. And many Americans subscribe to the idea that if you work an honest living over the course of your life and play by the rules, you can live a good life in retirement and be financially secure. However, these days, the pension system is mired in controversy as critics call for the dismantling of this government benefit that they claim is putting cities in bankruptcy. Garcetti's an idiot. Yep. Herb Weston's not much better. This guy is never at a loss for words. It's his way or the highway. This is Jack Humphreyville. For about 10 years, he's been writing for the website City Watch on all matters financial, trying to preach fiscal responsibility. Around downtown LA and especially City Hall, it's safe to say Humphreyville is not the most well-liked columnist. That's because he's written scathing articles blasting everyone from past Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa and current Mayor Eric Garcetti to city council members and even LA County supervisors. For Humphreyville, no one's off limits. I recently met him on the steps of LA City Hall to discuss what's enraging this LA watchdog, public pensions. I asked him about the government retirement plans and how he believes this system is bankrupting the city. Essentially, the, the pension plans have three sources of income. One are the employee contributions, and that doesn't matter whether it's a cop or it's a janitor, a civilian worker, or whatever it may be. The second one is the city, and the city makes a certain contribution every year, depending on a number of different factors. And the third area where the pension plans get their money is the return on investment. Now, sometimes that investment make, hits their hurdle rate, sometimes it doesn't, and if it doesn't, that means the city's on the hook for that incremental money. Now, one important thing to understand is that the city workers do not, do not contribute to Social Security, nor do, so therefore they don't get any Social Security benefits. It's a pretty good deal in that, um, you know, somebody, you know, the average salary, let's say, is $100,000 for a city worker. You know, if they work 30 years, uh, you know, they'll probably get 75 percent, you know, 70, 75 percent of their ending salary. If you're a cop, it'd probably be about 80 or 90 percent because, they, you know, it's a more, ha more hazardous job. This pension is for the rest of an employee's life. Yeah, it's not only a pension for the rest of their life, it's also they have their post-retirement medical benefits paid for too. And that's a huge, that's obviously a huge benefit. So is it kind of like a 401k plan for employees? The big difference is, is that, you know, in a 401k, you assume the investment risk. You put your money to work, you put it in a mutual fund, you put it into bond funds, you put it into whatever it is, and you're gonna get, you know, you might, you might hit a home run and make 20% one year and 0% the next year. With the city, these the, the employees are guaranteed a seven and a half percent rate of return. Is what it amounts to. And I've read some of your reports. You have ripped Garcetti. You have ripped the city council. You have ripped this pension system. Well, th there's a there's a bunch of things that have happened. One is they probably changed some of the assumptions from the beginning. You know, like you're going to live to be 65, and now you're going to live to be 85, and that has a significant impact on the unfunded liability. You know, they they've assumed seven and a half percent rate of return, and they're not making that. So yeah. unfunded liability, let's explain what that means. You're going to be entitled to a, a, a stream of benefits when you retire. So you're paying into that. The problem is, is that there aren't enough assets to cover it. So at the city level, there's about $42 billion worth of shortfall, and they say the assets are worth $32 billion. And so, we, the taxpayer, are paying for some of that now, oh, you're aren't on, we? Oh, you're, we're, we're not paying for some of it. We're paying for all of it. Oh, yeah, it's a biggie. I want to try and put this in some kind of perspective for you because we're talking about mega money, billions of dollars that we're spending out of our pockets, taxpayer money that's going towards funding these pensions. Imagine if the city took all of that money and did things like fixing and repairing all of these broken sidewalks that you see everywhere in Los Angeles. I mean, imagine walking over this every day. What if the city could fix this? Or what if the city could take all of that money being spent on pensions and use it to get these 25,000 homeless people in Los Angeles that line the streets, get them housing, get them a place to live, get them shelter? Or better yet, what about taking all of this money and fixing all of the potholes and repairing all of the roads all throughout the city of Angels? With this unfunded liability, you know, it's just like a piece of debt. You know, it's $15 billion worth of debt that, you, you know, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Now, despite what Jack Humphreyville says, 
many argue these pensions really were a great incentive to workers to take a government job instead of making more money in the private sector. And I guess, can you blame them? The question is, now that these pensions are being reined in, possibly even lowered for many workers, what effect is that going to have on the public workforce? In other words, Rick and Elizabeth are good workers going to look elsewhere for employment.